Thank you very much, um, ET Telecom, for uh, inviting me to express my thoughts on Indian Telecom for the Digital Telco Virtual Summit. Well, it's been my privilege to be associated with Indian Telecom for the last 25 years. From day one, when the private sector was allowed to participate in this sector, it's been a wonderful journey, a roller coaster journey at times, in fact, most of the times. And so much has happened in this industry in the last 25 years that several volumes will need to be written to recapture whatever has happened. But two things to my mind stand out when I look at the history of Indian Telecom since 1995. One, and that's something very rare for any industry. One, that this has been the most transformational industry uh, for the Indian economy. Uh, it's been the poster boy of the reforms which started in 1991 92 <clears throat> under leadership of Mr. Narsimha Rao and Dr. Manmohan Singh. So that's the positive on one side. And simultaneously, unfortunately, it also wears the crown for being the most value destructive industry that India would have seen in the last 25 years. Let me give you an idea of how these two things. Have happened. So on the transformational side, uh, when it started in 1995 when the first cellular services started, India was at a state where one had to wait for 20 years to get a telecom. The biggest favor in this country, which a politician or a bureaucrat could give, was to get a telephone connection out of town. From that to a position where it's Virtually every nook and corner of this country, there is mobile telephony. I think we have come a long way. Today, it would take virtual instantaneous connection. If somebody wants to take a telephone connection, uh, the EKYC and uh, the other based EKYC has enabled that. So from 20 years to perhaps 20 minutes at the most has been a great, great uh, uh, you know, achievement. The country which was completely disconnected today, as you know, every part is connected. And that is why India is moving very steadily toward digital India because of the solid foundation which has been laid, a massive infrastructure which has been created. Uh, this industry, as you have seen, has grown at a very, very rapid pace and therefore uh, in many ways, it attracted so much of foreign investment. It saw the kind of growth which India was not accustomed to see. And it really was the first industry to my mind which really put India on the world map and proved to the world that we could grow at rates which were not imagined. Simultaneously, there is absolutely no doubt that the value destruction in this industry has been tremendous. There were about 13 to 14 operators at one point. We are down to three private and one struggling BSNL and MTNL. Many of those operators had to either shut down the operations or had to merge or sell out or some have gone into insolvency. So it's been a dismal performance. At least, at least $50 billion would have been lost in the process. Uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs have been, um, you know, just uh, they have evaporated. And so by every measure, I think this has been quite a, a bad performance for the overall industry. Obviously, one big reason for this has been regulatory, where there has been irrational competition, which has been allowed with the issue of more and more licenses. The Taxation on this industry has been like that of a sin industry like liquor or tobacco. It's got the maximum taxation, whether by way of GST or license fee or spectrum charges. Um, there has been intense litigation between the department and the telecom operators, most of the time on highly technical uh, reasons. The stated policy of the government of India time and again ever since the telecom policy era started, right down to the latest uh, national digital communication policy, 
the stated policy has been that the aim of government of India is not to maximize revenue from telecom, but to increase penetration. But unfortunately, that has not happened. Time and again, we have seen that whether it comes to spectrum uh, auctions, the sole aim has been to maximize the return. And I think that needs to adapt. And that's been certainly beside the cutthroat competition being one of the biggest reasons where this industry has been forced to put more capital in spectrum rather than on the networks. And so I think the combination of these factors has been the result what we have seen today. But I think it will be uncharitable and wrong to just blame the regulation and the government. I think in all honesty, the private operators have got to share this blame too. We have had this tendency to have cutthroat competition, irrational pricing. Even when we are down to three private operators, I still see that trend continuing. We all keep saying that the current tariffs and the current ARPOs are completely unsustainable. But somehow or the other, we do not end up increasing the tariffs or uh, thereby increasing the ARPOs. I think this will have to certainly correct. Going forward, I think everybody will agree that the future of this industry is extremely bright. And we all know that telecom is the lifeline of any country, which has been even more amplified by a COVID situation where the whole country worked because of the telecommunication networks being pretty robust. I think the importance of this industry has never been felt more like it is being felt today. When we look forward, whether it is the data localization which will be coming, giving rise to a lot of demand for data centers, for optic fiber, uh, for digital content to be developed, or wireless um, fixed, uh, wireless broadband networks. I think the list is virtually endless. Enterprise solutions which we need to give to the enterprises for enabling their people to work remotely. I think all these open up tremendous opportunities for this industry going forward. The competition is now right. We have three private and one of the BSU entity for a country of our size. I think this is absolutely the right solution. So let's, let's for a moment examine what is really needed if we want to exploit this full potential, which obviously we must. I think what is needed is huge investment going forward. We are on the threshold of introduction of 5G. A spectrum will have to be bought. Networks will have to be put up. This is one industry where investment is given. To stand at the same place, you have to run. And therefore, we have to make provision for investments as the technology evolves. For that, I think there is an urgent need for the government to realize that the spectrum needs to come at a very reasonable price. And my feeling is that it's about time that the government and the regulation have to walk this talk and say, we are really not aiming to just maximize revenue from spectrum. We in any case get a lot of revenue share. Therefore, the spectrum provision has got to be at very reasonable rates. And if competition does push up those prices in the auction, so be it. But I think the starting point for the auctions, for 5G spectrum in particular, if India wants to be at the forefront of 5G, which is the stated policy of the government of India, I think the starting points for the auction will have to be very, very reasonable and nominal amounts. And if competition pushes up, it's fine. Otherwise, those should be given at those prices. I also feel that for, for the uh, spectrum installments which are given, a slight tweaking would be good, where instead of an equated yearly installment, let there be uh, you know uh, increasing installments along with the revenue potential. So I think that would again <clears throat> enable the industry to spare more cash for investment into the networks. I think one aspect which definitely we either have to self-regulate or the regulator will need to step in 
is to ensure that there is no predatory pricing in this industry. This industry cannot afford unsustainable, uneconomic tariffs. From time to time, we will have players who would want to come in and do that. But I think it's about time. We will have to put a stop to this if we want to see this industry uh, definitely uh, prospering. And there is already a consultation paper by TRAI on uh, fixing the floor prices. My appeal would be that at least for the next three or four years, it should be done. And thereafter, as things settle down, maybe this can be taken off. So even if it's a temporary measure, I think this industry definitely needs to ensure that the financial health of the industry is restored. Ease of doing business, I think a lot is being done by the government. DOT has been particularly very, very supportive along with TRAI when it comes to right away when it comes to putting the guidelines in place. States have been following it. Some of these states are still to notify those policies. But I would say overall, the progress on that front has been pretty good. One other aspect which perhaps would help speed up uh, the rollouts and make it more economical and financially healthy is sharing active as well as passive infrastructure. We have already seen India being a pioneer in sharing of passive infrastructure with great results. I think time has come that that sharing needs to be extended to active infrastructure as well. And perhaps one day one could look at the concept of a netco where there is one factory which can supply to many telecom operators uh, on the basis of capacity. So maybe some regulatory changes to accommodate that would be a welcome over time. In summary, I think telecom industry has a great opportunity once again to become a leading industry in this country. It provides a lot of employment. It can be a really the thought bearer for modern India, for digital India. And I feel all of us, particularly the operators themselves, the IP players, the infrastructure providers, and the government need to work in tandem to make sure that we create opportunities whereby this industry remains financially healthy. And then it can attract enough capital to invest it into the networks which this country will need. Thank you very much and I wish this particular summit a grand success.